What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, December 14th. Welcome to this week's video update. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you did not see in the community, we chose our Who Got Caught Being Hot this week, helping other traders. Our man G. Kane was the winner, so uh, just keep up the good work, guys. Love the traction we're getting in the community and the engagement and the participation. So keep that up. It's really important to keep this going to help other traders. So congrats to G. Kane on that. Let's jump into the alerts for the week. Starting on the 10th on Monday, our first trade was an SPY opening iron condor. So we already had an iron condor. Price had moved down close to our break even. And so we went ahead and added an added a new centered iron condor in SPY. IV percentile at that time was up to the 95 level. And so let's take a look at the charts. You can see big down move here recently. And so we'll see if this continues lower. Uh, market starting to take a little bit of a beating, which if you have short delta in your portfolio, this is treating you nicely. Uh, so here, here it is. We've got two pieces on. So let me uncheck this one here. So here's the one that we just put on. So you can see it's pretty centered. We've got some profit in that piece at this point. The other trade that we had on was our, our other iron condor. Now in a later alert, we went ahead and closed out the untested side as price moved down. So this one is out of range here. So we need a little bit of upside movement to, to benefit that trade. Uh, but we're just going to continue to hold this. And that's part of why we sold the other iron condor as well, just to add some more credit and continue to manage this as needed. So just playing the waiting game at this point in SPY. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is the S&P 500 futures contract. And so with this, we had a long put vertical that we've been rolling in our account. And we originally put this on for that short delta exposure and we're just keeping that going. So we wanted to extend duration. We only had 11 days to expiration at this point when we did the roll, rolled out to January, we were 39 days and we just adjusted our strikes a little bit closer to price as price has moved down. We were over 50% of max profit on the piece on that piece of the trade at that time. And so with the 11 days, it just made sense to roll. So let's take a look at that. It's, it's gone down even a little bit since we did that roll. So we've got a little bit of profit, just looking for some more uh, downside to benefit that trade. And again, just keeping that short delta exposure in our overall account. And by the way, we are, we are a little under one to one. We lost some of that short delta when we took off the SPY uh, short call vertical side of this one, uh, which gave us just this uh, long biased vertical. And so that creates uh, a little bit less short uh, uh, short delta in our account overall. So we're a little less than one to one. Uh, one of our members in the community suggested uh, kind of posting what our overall short delta to theta ratio is in the community. And so we're going to start doing that on a more consistent basis to give you all an idea of where we're at. So Great suggestion, and I think that's a great idea. So we'll keep you a little bit more up to date and posted, um, if not daily, at least every other day, just to give you an idea. Remember, it's it's not it's not something that you can keep exact all the time, and that's why we talk about keeping a range of anywhere from one to one to five to one. And you know, with the down move, a lot of times you lose some of that short delta. So then you don't really want to add short delta what we call in the hole. You don't want to really sell in the hole as the market already went down, but we want to look at opportunities to add to that short Delta exposure as we get bounce backs and, and opportunities to do so. So look for that in the community in the coming weeks and uh, another great suggestion, another value of this community, just people working together, asking questions, making suggestions to make this all easier for you all. So that's where we're at on our short Delta exposure. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So these were short call verticals that we originally had from an iron condor. In this case, we rolled from December with 11 days and we rolled out to February with 67. So we just skipped over January. Uh, just another way to kind of diversify that time frame, diversify that time in the trade, gives us more duration, gave us a bigger credit for that roll. 
and we adjusted our strikes down to compensate for the price moving down. We booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade and just extended that duration to keep the short delta in our portfolio. So if we take a look at DIA, we've got two different sets here. Here's the one that we just rolled out to February. And then here is the one that we've got in January. Okay, so that one uh, has a decent amount of profit. Again, once these get to about, you know, around that 50% of max profit range, depending on how much time is left, we'll look to roll our strikes closer. And if it makes sense, we'll roll these out in time. So in January, now we've got 35 days to expiration. In February, we've got 63. So remember, we, we typically like to be in that 30 to 60 days, but you know, rolling out to where in February we had 64, 65, or 66, that's not that big of a deal, especially on a directional kind of a bias trade, because uh, you're still going to get that directional benefit if, if it moves in your direction. Um, we'd like to stay under 60 days if we're really just kind of selling premium, more of a delta neutral strategy, but going out a little outside that 60 day range when you're rolling a directional uh, bias trade is is not a big deal at all. So that's what we did in DIA. Next trade, opening trade, uh, GLD gold, the implied volatility popped back up above, uh, well, at the 67 level when we put this on. So we went ahead and sold a strangle. And we did this in the gold futures forward slash GC. I mentioned you could have done short strangles or iron condors in either GC or GLD. We just simply opted for the gold futures uh, for a little bit more leverage, a little bit more efficient use of capital, but either is definitely fine. So if we take a look here at gold, spread this out a little bit more so you can see it here. We've got a little bit of profit up a little over $200 off of a potential $950. So just looking for some more profit to, uh, to come in before we, before we take that one off. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. So we closed out our put butterfly in FXI and we booked over 20% profit on that piece of the trade. Still holding our call uh, butterfly in January. I mentioned that we will be looking to add another put butterfly in the January cycle potentially, uh, but price really snapped back. And so we haven't added one yet. Now it's down again today. So it's really just kind of hovering around that that break even point. So if, if we get a little bit lower move down to around that 40 level, we will add another centered put butterfly around that. Uh, at this point, we're just holding our call butterfly. You know, if price bounces back into range, we'll just continue to hold and manage and, and then potentially close that one out. But if it does move out of range, we will add another piece and keep playing that ping pong game with price as it bounces back and forth and hopefully capture profits on both of those. We've been in this FXI trade for a while now and just continuing to to manage it till we get back to uh get back to profits next trade was on the 12th so on 12 11 on tuesday we did not have any alerts and i just kind of posted a portfolio update in the community uh, i've noticed that there are still a lot of pro members who have not joined the pro group or join join the pro uh, community so make sure you jump in there because that's where a lot of our communication and questions get answered and updates on the portfolio take place. So be sure to jump in there if you have not already. Uh, so next trade on the 12th on Wednesday was a rolling adjusting trade in NVIDIA. So I know some of the members mentioned they already closed out of this trade, booked a profit of around 50% of max profit. Great job. That's that was certainly an option. In this case, we decided to go ahead and roll. So we booked that 50% of max profit but we rolled to extend duration on the trade to try to capture even more. And kind of like we did in DIA, instead of rolling, uh, you know, keeping these in January with 37 days to expiration, we went ahead and to diversify our time in the trade, we went ahead and rolled this out to February, collect more credit, keep that short delta in our portfolio. Uh, you can see Nvidia down again today. So we're, we're up a little bit. It's pretty close to where we did the roll, uh, but just looking for some more downside in Nvidia to benefit that trade. Next trade was an opening trade in Lulu, Lululemon. So new short call vertical here. Uh, we added this trade really to add some short delta in our portfolio. Like I said, uh, we like to 
try to find different opportunities. In this case, the market was up this day. So we weren't really selling premium because implied volatility was contracting, but we did want to add some short delta into our portfolio, which we went ahead and did in Lulu. And you can see it's pretty close to where we did it. Uh, not much not much profits yet. So just waiting for a little bit more downside before we were to close that one. And you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're just looking for opportunity. So if the market's up, it, it's a good time to potentially enter into some short delta plays. With Lulu, we just saw a big move down after earnings and it had started to pop back up. And so we're just looking for a continuation to the downside. So nothing, nothing magical about that entry or anything, just looking for different uh, little pullbacks to make entries to add to that short delta exposure. Next trade was an opening trade in MU. So we haven't done many earnings related trades. Uh, as you all know, I've, I've said, said this before, when implied volatility is high, we want to use most of our available capital to our core positions, selling iron condors, selling strangles, uh, getting that, that benefit from that high implied volatility. So we don't do a lot of earnings trades. But I wanted to diversify and, and add some additional exposure in here. And I was looking at the different stocks that had upcoming earnings and ran across MU Micron Technology and looked like a good opportunity for a pre-earnings long straddle. Uh, only nine days to expiration in the options that we chose, and they announced earnings on 12-18. So that's Tuesday of next week after the market. So we want to be out of the trade by then. But just to remind you how this works. So what we looked at was, uh, here's the chart of MU. And the last few days before we put this on, we put it on right here on 12-12. So we got this contraction in implied volatility. So we looked at this as an opportunity to buy a pre-earnings long straddle because the, that trade is going to benefit from an expansion in implied volatility. So if it turns around and starts expanding into earnings like it has, and we get a decent move in price, that's how you benefit from a long straddle. So we're down on this trade a little bit, uh, down about $135, uh, just because the options have gotten cheaper. They haven't expanded enough to really help us. And of course, we haven't, you know, price hasn't really gone anywhere. So if we get a decent move down to around 32, 31, or a decent move up, you know, to around 30, 38 or 39, that's where we're going to profit on this trade. And we're looking for about 20% of uh, what we paid for the trade to get out. So we'll see what happens there, see if that works out. Uh, but just another way to kind of diversify and get some different exposure than just our typical premium selling strategies in there. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XRT. This is the retail ETF. So we had a short strangle on here. Price moved down uh, to a point where uh, it hadn't quite breached the short strike, but there was very little value left in those calls. So it just made sense to close those out, roll those closer to the current price. We like to roll down to around that uh, 30 delta price. And in this case, we just stayed in January. So we didn't roll out to February. We just rolled our calls down within the same cycle in January. So if we take a look at XRT. Here's what that looks like now. Prices, prices down here. It's moved down a, li a little bit more even since we did this, but we just simply rolled our calls down, which was at 48, what did I say, or 49? Uh, yeah, it was at 49, rolled them down to 45. So uh, the call was out here at 49, and we just simply rolled that down closer to price, collected that credit, and just continued to you know extend duration on the trade. So we'll just kind of hold this. If, if price continues lower, we'll, we could continue to roll our calls down uh, as we get closer to January expiration around that 21-day mark. We will look to potentially roll this out to February. So just continue to manage as needed. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So very similar to the DIA, we've got a couple sets of short call verticals in the queues that we've continued to roll to keep that short delta exposure. Uh, in this case, the uh, these options had just seven days to expiration. So we're looking to, when it, once we get down to that area, we're looking to roll out to the next expiration cycle. In this case, we just jumped over January and rolled out to February with 63 days. And, uh, and like I said, just extended that duration and rolled out to the next cycle. Um, so let's look at that, QQQ. So we've got these two different sets. 
Here's the one zeroed out in December that we rolled to February. So here is the February one, and it's moved down a little bit since then, so we've got some profit already after the roll. And then here's the one that we currently hold in January, and we've got a decent little profit in there, but just again, holding that till we get to about maybe 50% or so of max profit before we do anything in that piece. So we are completely out of December now. We've got trades in January and February, and then we've got the one earnings trade in Micron coming up. But as far as our all of our positions, that was the last one that was in December. So we are completely out of December at this point. Next trade that we did today was an opening trade in IYR. So implied volatility percentile up at that 68 level in IYR. This is the real estate ETF. So we wanted to sell some premium here, get some exposure in the real estate market. And uh, we did that in January with 35 days to expiration. The uh, I mentioned we sold our strikes a little bit closer than our typical iron condor. We went around that 30 delta mark just so we could collect enough credit to make the trade worthwhile. And so I'll show you what I mean here in IYR. Let's take off that theoretical one. So here's what that looks like here. So we made it a little bit more narrow. So in other words, the short strikes are sold a little bit closer to price but it gave us a bigger credit, a bigger max profit. And so it's always that kind of trade-off. Do you want a higher probability of success or a higher potential profit? In this case, we just opted for a little bit higher credit. And, uh, and so we'll manage this as needed. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in SPY. I already went over this one. So this was a where we closed out the untested side, still holding the uh, short put vertical side. And then we've also got that full iron condor that I, that I mentioned as well. So just holding on that for now. And then lastly, we did a closing trade in forward slash ZB, which is the bond futures. We had a short strangle, booked over 30% of max profit in just eight days. The IV percentile still nice and high at 72. So assuming it stays high into early next week, we will potentially look to enter a new bond position because uh, we like to have that exposure. Uh, just another symbol to diversify out of uh, within our portfolio. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Uh, oil moving down today. That's not what we want in oil. It's down about over 2.5%. Uh, we've got two different pieces on in oil. We've got our two different adjusted short strangles. This is the 58 call, 63.5 put. So this is a uh, an inverted short strangle. And you can see price is down here, so it's still in our range. We've still got a little bit of premium left in these calls, uh, as you can see. Um, so we're not looking to make any adjustments yet, just kind of holding for now. We've got 33 days left to expiration. Uh, so we've got a little bit of de a decent amount of time before we would need to roll out to the next expiration. And then here is the other piece, which is uh, also a, uh, I'm sorry, this is not an, a, an inverted strangle, but it has been adjusted. So we had rolled our calls down and price kind of hanging out down here in the lower end of the range. But again, we've got, we've got some premium still, uh, not as much in the calls here. So if price continues lower, we will go ahead and roll those calls down. But at this point, we are just holding. Obviously, a bounce higher in oil is going to help us. And it's, uh, you know, it's just been kind of bouncing around in a little pretty pretty narrow range since it's had that huge downside so just going to continue to stay mechanical on oil uh es i mentioned that one gold i mentioned that one nat gas big move down today and that really helps us um i mean look at look at this massive move higher than the kind of consolidation now it's breaking lower so i mean this is so critical just to stay mechanical i know there's a lot of people who were, who were kind of freaking out when they had this big move higher, busted out of the range of our short strangles. But you've got to stay mechanical even when things, you know, have big moves like this. And this is why. I mean, markets don't move in one direction forever. There's always going to be end up being some two-sided action. The key is, did you stay small enough to withstand the, this big move? And, and that's so, so critical. And I, and I know I talk about this all the time, but it just continues to be the most important thing when it comes to trading, and that is your size. The fact that we stayed small enough to you know, endure this huge move gave us the ability to wait for price to come back. If we were too big and we had to close out of this trade because the move you know, 
expanded our margin and expanded uh, our, you know, our losses expanded to a point where we couldn't hold it, that's when you get hurt with this kind of trading, okay? If you stay small enough, you cannot get hurt because you can withstand those big moves and just extend duration on those trades to get back to where you need to be. And so by staying small, it not only allowed us to stay mechanical in our adjustments within that gas, and this goes for oil too, but it also allowed us to continue to manage our other positions in our portfolio. So since that big move, I mean, we've, we've closed out and opened, you know, I don't know how many different trades, but if that move was too big for our account and did not allow us to make those other trades in the portfolio, then we would have missed out on those too. So it's so, so critical to keep your position size small. And, and remember, these, these options on futures contracts, these are bigger than equities. So you've got to stay even smaller. We only do one contract at a time. In this case, we added another piece. So we've got two contracts in that gas and two in oil, uh, which, you know, I mean, that's pushing the limits of size even in the account that we're trading. But here's the cool thing, guys. Listen to this. So after the oil and nat gas massive moves, excuse me, right before that, our overall portfolio for the alerts account was at about 96,000 is where that peaked. That's, that was the high P&L mark, right? So we started the year with a little under $70,000 in the account. It had a little over, right at 96,000 right before this big move. Well, guess where we stand now? We're at about 93,000, okay? So we've almost made back all that money in the account and we're still down on that gas, we're still down on oil, but the fact that we kept our size small enough to still continue to manage and add to and take off other positions in our portfolio has given us the, bil the ability to come all the way back almost to where we were from our, from our high P&L in our account. And that's, I just cannot stress enough how critical that is to keep your position size small because it allows you to do so many things and allows you to sleep at night when you have these big moves. And now we're getting to move back in our direction, which is helping. So anyway, I just I had to go on that little rant because it's so, so important. Um, all right, so here is, let's check out our natty gas position. So we've got this one inverted adjusted strangle and you can see prices come back almost all the way right to center in this thing now, crazy moves. So we, uh, what we'll do here is we will, we're holding this for now. Just waiting for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay. We've got a decent amount of time here. We've still got 45 days to expiration in these options. So not looking to roll out yet, uh, but just looking to, to hold for now. And then we've got this other piece, which is right at the four strike. And this is a uh, has been adjusted to a, a four strike straddle, basically. And now look at price. It's even, it's even left of center here. It's even on the downside of the center with this big move down that we've seen. So just continuing to hold this and we'll continue to, to roll and collect these credits until we get back to profits in Natty Gas. In wheat, we've got an iron condor here still, pretty centered, got some profit, not quite enough to take off yet. But uh, if we do get to about 50% of max profit on this, I think we'll be at uh, in the positive profit for our wheat trade. It's been a long battle, just kind of back and forth, and we've just kind of continued to play the game. We'll get back to profits, and then we'll have a losing trade, and then we'll add another one, and we'll get back to profits. And so it's just been a just been a little bit of a battle in wheat. We've been in this trade for a long, long time. It would be kind of cool to close this out because I do want to do a full analysis for beginning to end on this trade just to show you how we've battled this iron condor over the last year. Uh, Apple down 3.2% today, so we've got some profit in our long put vertical here. Uh, we'll just continue to probably roll this for that short delta exposure, assuming we need it at the time where we get to you know maybe around 50% of max profit before we do anything here. DIA I mentioned, EEM. So I was, I was looking to potentially get filled on this, but I wanted a little bit more profit, so I kind of set the the exit away from the current price never never really got closed. So once we get to about 50% of max profit here, we'll close this one out and we are in positive P&L on our EEM trade at this point. EWW, kind of the same thing here. We're looking for a little bit more profit before we take this one off. You know, what? one thing we may do too in the next week, assuming price is still fairly centered, 
is we won't be down to that 21 days to expiration point yet, but if they do, I think next week is when they're going to be adding the uh, the February options. You can see there's a February weekly, but they don't even have the February monthly options out yet. But once they add those, we may look to extend duration by rolling this out to February because once once those come available, they will be around that 60 days to expiration mark. So we'll just continue to hold until then. Uh, we're we're still slightly down on our EWW trade, so looking for a little bit more profit before we do anything, uh, before we close that one out. And the applied volatility is still nice and high. You know, IV percentiles at the 90 level, so definitely a symbol that we wanna have exposure in. Then Facebook, we've got this adjusted strangle in Facebook. Could use a little bit of downside and just more time to pass in our Facebook adjusted strangle there. I mentioned FXI, I mentioned IWM, I think, right? I've got an iron condor, maybe I didn't. I've got an iron condor here in IWM. Just looking for you know price to kind of stabilize or go a little bit up, more theta to, uh, to uh, decay before we do anything in IWM. IYR, I mentioned Lulu, I mentioned MU, Netflix. We've got a short call vertical here in Netflix that we originally put on for short delta exposure. It's right where we put it on here, so just looking for some downside to to benefit that one. It's down over three percent today, so it was it was out of our range. It's come all the way back in, so. Just looking for some more downside to benefit that. NVIDIA, I think I already mentioned this one. Yeah, we rolled this one out to February. Qs, we've got the short call verticals. I mentioned that one. SMH, uh, just looking for a little bit of upside, some more theta to the K, time to pass for that one. And then SPY, I mentioned. XLK, another short delta position we have on. This is a long put vertical. Got some downside today and just use, could use a little bit more to benefit that piece. And then XRT, our adjusted strangle. I mentioned that during our alerts. So that's all the alerts. That is all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Look forward to another great week of trading next week. Talk to you soon, my friends.